President, um, I'm pleased to rise and make a contribution to the Appropriation Parliament uh, Bill 2020-2021. Uh, this is an important bill. It not only appropriates funds for the Parliament, but most importantly for the independent officers who have got such an important scrutiny role and oversight role. So the, um, the parliamentary uh, budget is critical, but the Inspectorate, the, the Auditor-General, the Independent Broad-Based Anti-Corruption Commission, the Ombudsman are also funded through this uh, budgetary allocation. And it's to those that I wish to direct my attention. Mr Rich Phillips has covered the uh, more general matters. And the opposition is very concerned about the activities of the, state, uh, the uh, Victorian state government at the moment, the Andrews Labor government, in its attack on independent institutions, its attack on the Ombudsman, its attack on IBAC. And whilst both of these bodies are undertaking significant um, work in terms of inquiries that are uncomfortable for the state government, that are investigating matters uh, which attack the state government's uh, probity and the state government's um, uh, position in terms of um, planning matters, in terms of the Labor Party itself. All of these inquiries by independent officers uh, have been initiated in a way that is unpleasant for the Labor Party and for Daniel Andrews in particular. And the result of that is that the government has chosen to cut their budget, to slice hard into their budget. And they've done this to penalise them, to punish them, to punish them for holding the government to account, for actually scrutinising the government in an independent man manner. And uh, I say uh, the amendments that the opposition is moving here uh, today in committee uh, will seek to restore uh, some of that money that Daniel Andrews and his troop have cut from the independent officers. I say this is a very important set of amendments. The $2 million that the opposition proposes to put back in for the Ombudsman will make sure that Deborah Glass in that role, that critical role, uh, that independent role of the Ombudsman is in a position to undertake the inquiries that are required and that her office is not crimped, her office is not controlled and, 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 and brought into line by the nasty decision of the government to cut funding to that office when it's mid-flight with a number of key inquiries. And the same with the IBAC. The, um, it's very clear when you look at the budget figures that there is a cut of $4.4 million, and that money uh, will be restored if the opposition's suggested amendment is accepted by the government and by uh, the chamber. I would hope that the government would rethink its fundamentally anti-democratic stance. It's fundamentally uh, its attack on independent scrutiny and independent institutions. I would hope it would rethink in this chamber. Uh, when the suggested amendments are moved by Mr Rich Phillips on behalf of the opposition, uh, we would hope that the crossbench would see that this chamber's role as a house of scrutiny, a house of review, a house which actually has the time and capacity to look at bills in detail, and in this case, move a suggested amendment, a series of suggested amendments, which would protect those independent institutions, restore the money that's required to enable them to do uh, the work that is required to hold the government to account. And I would hope each and every one of the uh, crossbenchers would see the importance, the absolute importance of this chamber sending a very clear signal, standing up for the independent officers, standing up for the scrutiny uh, that is needed, standing up against government cuts to the independent officers that are so important in maintaining uh, a clean system, keeping corruption under control, making sure that administrative and other mistakes that are properly investigated by the Ombudsman are actually corrected. And you know the, the work that the Ombudsman is doing is very important. The work that the, um, that the IBAC is doing is equally uh, very significant. And we've heard you know, story after story come out of the IBAC, um, and the opposition believes that this 4.4 million should be put back into the budget so that there is no doubt, there is no doubt that the um, IBAC is able to do the work that is um, required. Now I make the point that in a very unusual uh, pattern, the um, IBAC has placed its concerns and its 
its issues up on its website. So anyone in the community can go and read uh, that it is in a position where it needs that additional funding. Um, and you can see in the schedule to this bill uh, what is required there. Equally, the uh, report by the Ombudsman uh, to this parliament, so tabled today, uh, tabled initially last week but formally today in the chamber, uh, makes it very clear, makes it very, very clear that in fact the um, money that she needs to do the work as an independent Ombudsman is not there at the moment. And that money should be. And I say to each member of the Labor Party over there, and to each member of the crossbench, think about what is important here. What is important is the independent scrutiny of governments, holding governments to account. Governments spend an enormous amount of taxpayers' money. We need to make sure that this is done in a clean way, that it is done in a way that is beyond reproach, where corruption is not involved, and it clearly is the case that we've seen the work of um, uh, the corruption uh, in a number of levels of government. And, I, and in my own portfolio of uh, transport, transport infrastructure, uh, we've seen that series of hearings where Mr Pinder, the CEO of V-Line, clearly corrupt to his bootstraps, corrupt to his bootstraps, and that has been exposed. And we've seen he should be in jail. We've seen he should be in jail, and he may well be in jail. And I, I, my view is that the work that has been done by the IBAC on exposing the corruption in the rail sector, in the transport sector in Victoria, is absolutely critical. And think about, think about what's involved here. We've had a, a, a clean, series of cleaning contracts at Metro Trains. Government money that's been involved in controlling those contracts at Metro Trains. And we, we hear about the sprinkles, we hear about the, um, the, uh, the, the, the payoffs and the crooked arrangements that have been there. And you know, the COVID issue comes along and the, uh, the offer is there that we'll, we'll pump up the money to Metro Trains cleaning contractors and over here at V-Line uh, will pump up the money for the V-Line uh, cleaning contracts as well. This is just corruption out and out, corruption pure and simple. The IBAC is very pushed with the amount of work it's got at the moment. It is very pushed. And you know, I'm singling out this area because that is my portfolio area and saying that that area of transport and transport infrastructure is quite critical. And you know, I, I, I want to say something about V-Line too. V-Line in particular, a government agency, a government statutory authority. And here we have, here we have in, at V-Line, um, the board is turned over by Ms Jacinta Allen, the then Minister for Transport and now Transport Infrastructure, in tw from 2016 onwards. She cleaned the board out, put all of her own people in, all of her own people in. Everyone was turned over. Since 2016, the board has been brand new and the board has not been able to prevent this corruption occurring. It has allowed, it has allowed the CEO, Jacinta Allen's hand-picked CEO, corrupt, crooked, crooked to the core, this CEO, allowed him, has allowed him to use public money to aggrandise himself to actually build his house, to do all sorts of things, these amazing uh, uh, ruses to actually shift public money into the pockets of corrupt people around him. And what has the board done? What has the board of V-Line done? They've done nothing. They have not been up to it at a minimum. I don't know whether they're in on it. I don't know whether they're in on it, President. I don't know whether they're in on it up to their neck whether any of them are taking money, I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that at a minimum, they were so incompetent that they've allowed this corruption to occur under their watch. And it wasn't so, it wasn't as so they didn't have a wake up call. Operation Lansdowne by IBAC was a wake up call. It pointed to corruption in the transport industry. It pointed to corruption in contracts at V-Line. And what has the board done? They've allowed it to continue. They've allowed it to continue. I mean, this is crooked to the core. Why did the board not act and put in place proper mechanisms to stop public money being stolen by these crooked individuals? Why? Jacinta Allen needs to answer that. She was the minister. 
And then she put in her own hand-picked board chair, the head of PTV, Jerome Weimer. I reckon he's in it up to his neck. I reckon he's crooked. I reckon he's corrupt. He was put in as a special, as a special. He was not only the head of PTV, but he's put in as board chair of V-Line. We said at the time there was a clear conflict of interest. Of course there's a clear conflict of interest. You've got an independent board with statutory duties. You've got an officer over here who's got duties to the department of the PTV, which is the funder of V-Line. So you've got a crooked organisation, an organisation that's got a history with Lansdowne known to be corrupt. And you put in a senior public servant as board chair and the corruption continues. And it gets worse. And now Jerome Weimer has been made head of contact tracing. Well, I understand he left PTV and the department with some cloud. Some cloud. But either way, he should not have been, he should not have been in that role. He should not have been in that role. He should not have been in that conflicted role where he's both the, the funder at PTV and the board chair of the independent statutory authority. And at a minimum, he failed to stop the corruption. He failed to stop it. It's happened under his watch. He has not been asked to explain, and he should be. And I don't think his position is tenable into the future. I don't think his position is tenable at all. I think he's up to his collie wobbles in it, and I think he should be, he should be actually pulled aside, pulled aside and flicked out. But I say on this, this is about the independent officers. We actually need to make sure that the ombudsman can do their work and that the IBAC can do its work. If we don't fund them properly, they can't. And I'll say there is only one reason, one reason to vote against these suggested amendments, and that is because you want to be part of a thing with the government, with the Labor government, with Daniel Andrews' government, to nobble the ombudsman and to nobble the IBAC.